Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the reason why the listening room and the cinema room for Pursuit of Perfect System is pitch black. Now, I've wanted to do this video for ages, just as an explanation why it is that way. It made sense to do it as part of a AV section or part of an AV review. And actually, at the moment, we've got the Arcam AVR850 AV receiver in for review. So it seemed the perfect time to make this video. Now. I'm sure everybody's heard of the term bat cave, but you know, why do people have a bat cave? What is a bat cave? What is the benefits of a bat cave for cinema? And potentially what is the benefits of a bat cave for listening to music? So that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to look at what a bat cave is, the benefits it has for cinema, you know, the home cinema experience, the benefits and potentially the negatives for the home music listening experience as well. <laughs> Okay, the, the first thing to, to speak about, and probably the most obvious thing for the reason for the Batcave is picture quality with a home cinema projector screen. Now, I would have thought most people out there know that with a home cinema projector screen, it, the, you know, the most, one of the most important things with picture quality is contrast. Now, the way a projector screen works, obviously it reflects light back at the, the viewers. Now, if you imagine it's trying to reflect the, you know, to get a black level, it's trying to reflect a minimum amount of light. So, if you think about the difference between you know this room, like a pitch black room, and this is not only a pitch black room, this has got stuff put on the walls, stuff put on the ceiling, you know, a certain type of material put over the acoustic panels and stuff to actually absorb light. So it's not just black paint, it's not just grey paint, that's not enough. This is actually taking it as far as possible over as much of the room as possible so that actually light is absorbed as opposed to reflected at any amount and we'll get to the reasons for that and actually it's really surprising the differences between you know black for example now some material you can buy and some paint you can buy you think it's black until you put something that's really black next to it and then you realize it's actually just a shade of gray but that, that's obviously, we'll cover that a bit more in a second. So if we just look at you know the, the projector screen at the moment with these two very handsome young men on the screen. Now we can really see, if you just look at that, you can see that's an extremely washed out and an extremely bleached out image. Now, at the moment I've got in this room, just for example, I've got one you know ultra bright photography light shining directly on the screen. And I've got there's six spotlights, LED orientated spotlights, each putting out equivalent of about 50 watts each. So there's actually, you know, several hundred watts of light shining in this room. Now you probably don't think it looking at the camera, but that is the reality. And then we've got a Sony VW500 4K projector shining at the screen at, at about pretty much maximum brightness because that's what looks best. So we've got lots and lots of lumens shining at the screen. And as you can see, the image is completely washed out. So, just to show the difference, if I turn off the big bright spotlight, the photography spotlight, straight away, you know, a direct light pointing at the screen, gone. Look how much more contrast we get in the image. You know, obvious, black, you know, easy to see. You know, that's easy to see, very clear. Now, is, is that real life? Is that a reflective of a real life situation? You know, do, do, are people going to have a massive, great big spotlight? shining the screen. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But if you think about a room with windows open, the sun shining in, then that potentially is something that they're going to get. So you saw straight away, but we'll turn it back on again. Look at the difference. Look how much the image, look at the contrast for the image. It looks like it's completely bleached out. Turn it off and we start to get a picture back again. So that, that's a very obvious and easy uh, explanation. Now, obviously look at our spotlights. We've got, as I say, four sets of three spotlights, two at the back of the room and two at the front of the room. So, if I turn the ones at the back of the room off first, oh, that's the ones at the front of the room, sorry, and the ones at the back of the room now, now we start to get an even better image contrast. Obviously turn the lights back on again, and you can see how it bleaches out, turn them off, and then we start to get our picture back. So. Hopefully you can see the importance of light and reflected light on this screen. So I can't give the equivalent of a normal room with white walls, but what is really surprising is just how much light 
is reflected around a room. Now, if I was to turn the projector screen off, I literally just use my phone, turn the phone on, the brightness from the phone reflected off of this screen would light up pretty much this whole room. And it's amazing how much light is reflected off of bright surfaces. Now this is a reflective surface, but really this isn't any different to a big white wall and a big white ceiling or a big light colored ceiling. So if you think about it, right, we've got, you know, this is a 100 inch screen, a 235 to one screen. So we've got, you know, a 100 inch wall there, a 100 inch surface. Now, if you times that by the ceiling, by the, you know, potentially by the floor, by all the walls, the rear wall, you've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of inches of reflective surface. Now the light will shine off of the screen, off of the walls, off of the ceiling, and back onto the screen again. And we get very much something similar, or the equivalent, to this, where we get a bleached out image. So, the back cave, or the back, the correct back cave, where we've got stuff on the walls, material on the walls, material on the floor, and that's why I've got a black rug, obviously covering over the grey carpet. Again, this is a, I, I tested out all different types of rug material, and this was by far the best in terms of absorbing light. So that's why this is here, and again, the stuff on the ceilings, on the acoustic panels, which in the video you won't see, but obviously in real life you can see them really easily, so that we get literally no reflected light in the room at all. And the difference in image quality is literally night and day. Night and day. So, that's a very obvious one. That's a very easy, easy one. And most people, I would assume, are aware of you know, the effects of light on a projector screen. Now, I'm sure people at home are saying to yourself, well, why bother? Why bother with all that grief? Why bother blacking a room out when you can just get a light rejecting screen, something like a Draper or a, you know, a, a Screen Innovations Black Diamond? And I make you totally right. Those screens are fantastic. So they're screens that are maybe gray in color or the Black Diamond is black in color so that you get a much higher contrast ratio from a projector screen in a light room or in any room. And they, those screens do work perfectly and they are really good and you get a fantastic image. Now. There's trade-offs with those screens. Obviously, with a light-colored screen, like this screen is a Seymour AV. Obviously, it's a motorized screen in their UF material. Now, the UF material is specifically designed for sitting close, which obviously I do. And it's also an acoustically transparent screen, which is why we can have the speakers, etc., behind the screen, which is definitely the best way to do it for cinema. Now, this screen is actually rated at a one Gain. Now that one gain is the is a rating for the amount of light that this will reflect back into the room. Now if you use a light rejecting screen, generally you lose gain from the screen. So they may be dropped down to 0.8 or 0.6. So you get a less bright image from the projected for the amount of projected light from the projector. So that's something to bear in mind. If you are going to use a light rejecting screen, you're probably going to want to use as bright a projector as you can get. Now, as we move further and further into the 4K and HDR world, already projectors are struggling. Already projectors are up against it in terms of creating a, you know, a bright enough image for HDR. So when you think about it, using a light, using a light rejecting screen that's reducing gain which straight away means you know, projectors have got a more difficult job to try and produce you know, a HDR image that's going to compete with anything like a TV. So technically, it actually makes more sense to use a more level gain screen, like a lighter coloured screen, and have you know, the perfect conditions within your room. Now, we are what you are watching Pursuit of Perfect System, and that is really what everything's about for me personally um, about this channel, really. So... The perfect conditions for a projected image is exactly back cave, pitch black, because we get such improved contrast because there is literally no light rejecting. But that is not, that is certainly not the only reason why we do it. So for me, there's two reasons why we have a back cave. One is picture quality, and picture quality is based around the improved contrast ratio like I've just dis dis uh, displayed to you and explained to you then the second reason is actually for actually probably it's not more important but it's equally as important is actually the picture experience and how immersive the experience is so I'm going to talk to you about that next 
Okay then, for you know the second part of the video, we're going to talk about the picture experience and how immersive the picture is, or how immersive how immersive the picture can be, or how immersive the picture isn't if we don't take into account. And you know that is one of the main benefits for the Batcave, for the Pitch Black Cinema Room. It's just how immersive the image can be. Now with a high quality projected image and you can do it with a TV as well if it's got the right conditions around it it is literally like you are looking through a window into whatever you are watching now the reason it's like that is literally because your eye is really you don't even you don't even realize you're doing it but the difference between watching an image or the difference between watching something on the telly or watching a film and actually seeing through a window into the content is based around what your eye is picking up the whole time you're watching the content. So the next time you're sitting there watching the telly or even maybe you're watching this YouTube video now, actually think for a second, what can I see? Can I see a screen? Can I also see you know, some ca a cabinet over there? Can I also see a dining table over there? Can I also see a window, some curtains, a ceiling, some lights? all within my peripheral vision, all around what I'm watching. Now as humans, obviously we are really good at tuning out all of those things, but they are not actually tuned out. They are actually visible, and they are ruining the actual immersiveness of the experience. Now, we pay a lot of money for our home cinema systems, or our home music systems, or whatever it is you're using, and we want those systems to be as good as possible. So. Really, for me, a movie is, or a movie or a film is supposed to be a completely immersive experience. You're supposed to get lost. You're supposed to, you know, it's escapism, isn't it? We get lost in a movie for a few hours or however, however how long it is, and we're completely lost. And, and the sound does that, and the picture does that. So, looking at our screen now, I've actually lowered the screen more, actually, to the actual correct height. I've also zoomed the image in a little bit just to try and get the bars off the sides of the screen because this is a 16 by 9 uh, footage obviously coming off of YouTube for this extremely handsome man here and this other guy, I'm not sure who he is. And obviously I'm just trying to make sure there's not you know the edges to the screen. So that's why we zoomed in quite a lot. Now already you can should be able to see on the video because of the light reflecting here, we can see all our equipment underneath the screen. So if I was sitting there watching this, even if we had a good contrast from the image from like a light rejecting screen as we spoke about, I would still be able to see the Blu-ray player, the Isotech Nova mains conditioner, the centre speaker stand. You know, at the moment there's no kit on the bottom of that rack, but I'll be able to see the rack. I can also see the bottom of the speakers. I can see the subwoofers in the corner. I can see the acoustic panels either side. And I can actually see the top of the screen, obviously the material from the screen that comes down. So, while I'm sitting there and I'm watching the film, I'm actually seeing all of those things as well. And they are in my eye line. And you know, why it's fine, and you know, it's fine to watch films like that, etc, etc. That is not nearly as good as if we take them all out. So we take them all out. I'm going to move off to the side. You probably can't see me. You might be able to see me. But now, literally, all we can see is screen. All we can see is image. And, you know, there is nothing more immersive than seeing purely the image. So, look at putting the lights back on. This was just like a little example of what, you know, the damage that potentially that can be done to the experience by having, you know, things within the eye line. So what happens if we make it a bit more uh, representative of watching a projector screen in a light room? Okay then, to make this representative, uh, I've been and I've raided the, the airing cupboard, I've raided the beds, pulled off some sheets, and I've pinched the towel and laid it on the floor. So, what I'm just trying to represent is, you know, what it would be like if there was light coloured walls and a light coloured floor, you know, around the screen, and just trying to show how visible that is in your eye line by comparison to, you know, the back cave conditions. So if we take the lights out, you'll see just how reflective and how visible it is. So lights back on. So you can clearly see how much light is reflecting off of this screen, you know, and making this towel you know, really visible and the side walls really visible. But it literally doesn't have to be something as drastic as a big solid mass of white. Um, I'm going to show you something else now to prove that. Okay, so I'm just going to scatter a sprinkle 
of polystyrene beads or whatever you would call them across and take, let's take the lights out and we'll see how reflective they are. See again, you know, you can really see those, they're clearly visible. You can really see the sidewalls, they're clearly visible. And, you know, think about how small really this is. To, to get a more true reflection of what it would be like in a light coloured room, we'd need to amplify this by about 500 because, you know, surrounding the white is pitch black. So, you know, if this was all white, this would make this, you know, really drastic. But even with, you know, this little amount of light colour below the screen and on the sidewalls, you can really see how visible that is on your eye by comparison to without. So I'm just going to show something else. It doesn't necessarily have to be a light colour or a white colour in order to be visible. So bear in mind, you know, that the, the, these sprinkles on the floor maybe are could be a you know representative of, of a carpet with like a, like a darker carpet, even with a light fleck in it. You're still going to see that. So bear that in mind, but let me show you something else now. Okay then, on the floor we literally have a brown cardboard box. The, funny enough, the cardboard box that came with all these little bulgy and polystyrene bits in it. So let's see how reflective you know that a brown colour is. You know, looking at it, I mean, I've just been cross-referencing, you know, the video as, as I'm making the video, uh, cross-referencing what we're seeing. And to me, looking through the camera screen, the brown was more visible than the white tape. So again, it just goes to show that it doesn't necessarily have to be white in order for it to be reflective, in order for it to be visible. And actually a brown colour, you know, also what's a cardboard colour, like a medium brown, I suppose, isn't it? It's still extremely visible in the surroundings. So... Think about that for, um, actually, quickly, let me just take this all away and show you the comparison. We're now back to, no, back cave conditions, really. Literally, pure screen. Bearing in mind, you know, because, again, because this is a two, three, five to one screen, and the, you know, the image is 16.9, I've zoomed it big to, f to fill the screen as much as possible. There's a little bit of light spill down here. So please try and ignore that for, for purposes of what I'm trying to show you. Just really pay attention to the bulk of what we're seeing. So with nothing in the eye line, we literally have nothing but picture. And that is as immersive as it can be. And it is literally like looking through a window. There's nothing else there to distract you. There's nothing else there to get your attention. And you know, it's all about creating an illusion, and when there's nothing else there to break the illusion, to ruin the illusion, the illusion is much more powerful. So hopefully that's sort of shown you the effects for home cinema, you know, um, picture quality contrast, be a black and white night as day, but immersiveness, the immersiveness of the experience, the removing of the room completely from a visual point of view and literally just seeing the, the picture, just seeing the movie that you're watching, is the ultimate in terms of, you know, the you know, picture quality and an immersive experience. It's the ultimate in terms of a home movie or any movie experience. Now, the first time I experienced this, it literally was, you know, a hobby changing experience for me. And I'll say life changing to a degree because I couldn't get it out of my mind. Once I'd seen it, I could not get it out of my mind. And I literally then changed everything in my, you know, listening room to be projector orientated and uh, back cave black orientated. So, you know, once you've gone black for uh, your home cinema room, there is no going back. It is the perfect and ultimate way to watch a movie. But, you know, just like this room is, people have multi-purpose rooms. This is a multi-purpose room. You know, it's used for listening to music as much as it is for watching movies and watching films. So, you know, what is the effect of a pitch black room on, on music listening. So let's quickly put the screen up. Quickly just pause the video. And quickly turn off 
the projector to not be distracted. Now, normally when you watch the channel, if you see the uh, playback demonstration videos, this is probably along the lines of what you see. You see the system, and it's you know, extremely dark in here. So the effects on mu music listening. Now, if you if you read a lot of what you know reviewers and other serious music listeners say. Quite often you'll read or hear them say, you know, I dim the lights down, I sat myself down to relax and I close my eyes. And why are they closing their eyes? I mean, I think the hi-fi, the stereo system has the hardest job of all things home, you know, home entertainment orientated. Why is that? It's because, you know, when we watch a movie, we have a visual cue. We see a big robot, you know, stamp its foot and we get a big bass note. And we straight away associate the, the, the bass note with the robot stamping its foot. You know, easy to, to create that illusion. Now, when we you know look at a, a hi-fi system, what are we seeing? Well, you know, we might see you know a window and a, and a beautiful view. We might see a window, you know, a view of a next door neighbor's house. We might see a blank wall with a fireplace, or we might see not a lot in the case of being in here. Now, all those situations are different. You know, depending on what you've got at home. Now, how often does what you're seeing? match up to what you're hearing. I would actually say never. So what our brain is seeing, the visual cue is completely the opposite or completely different to what our ears are hearing. And you know, the hi-fi system is supposed to be making us believe that we are seeing or and hearing the real thing. That is what you know, we spend all the time and the money on. So if what we're seeing is something completely different to what we're hearing, then that is obviously making the job much harder than it, you know, than it needs to be or much harder than it can be. So I think that's why people close their eyes, is to remove the visual cue. So if you remove the visual cue, I, I think our ears actually are probably improve in terms of you know the attentiveness that we pay, and it just makes the whole experience more uh, enveloping, more enjoyable, more believable, and I think definitely more transparent in terms of you know you're less aware that you're listening to a hi-fi system and more just listening to music. So if you think about what I've just said in terms of you know the benefits of you know this black back cave situation for home cinema, it removes the room, it removes you know, the, the, the visual stimulus that you don't want. So if we black out completely the room, it's doing the exact same thing. It's removing the visual stimulus and allowing us into the music more and allowing us to concentrate on the music more, not so much on what we're seeing. Now, you know, obviously you can do that by shutting your eyes. But I personally find shutting my eyes really odd and obscure for listening to music because if I was out you know, listening to a live band I wouldn't be sitting there with my eyes closed and also if I sit there with my eyes closed for too long I quite often fall asleep so you know by blacking out our room and in listening in you know in very dark conditions you know once you get used to that it really does have the exact same effect as Watching the movie, it removes the visual stimulus and allows you into the music, allows you to enjoy the music more, in my opinion. Now, I appreciate everybody's different. Some people might like listening to their music in a you know, lovely lit up room with lovely pictures all over the wall and stuff like that. And I, you know that is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But just think for a second, you know, I'm trying to make, I want a believable experience. I want a real experience. If what I'm seeing is nothing like what I'm hearing, that is making the job harder. So if we can remove the visual stimulus, then you know potentially we get a more, you know, a more believable and certainly a more, you know, more transparent experience. So actually, you know, the back cave can have its benefits for you know music listening just the same as it can for movie watching. So I hope this has been an enjoyable video and I hope it's explained why the room is black. Now the room is black here for the movie experience, for the ultimate movie picture quality and it in engrossing and enveloping experience. But it does have its benefits for listening to music as well. And what it doesn't have its benefits for is YouTube videos because it's, you know, it's very dark in here. There's not a lot to look at. So that's why I made this video. I wanted to explain why I'm doing it the benefits for it, how it helps you know, get me one step closer to you know, in my pursuit of the perfect system. And it is something you could definitely use at home. If you are lucky enough to have a dedicated room, then going black with it is hugely beneficial for, for, for music, for mu movie watching, but it can be beneficial to music as well. So bear that in mind. Now, check in, please check back in the channel because you know there's going to be quite a lot of AV orientated content coming up in September starting with the uh, RKM AVR 850 review that's not all I'm going to be doing I've got some really interesting products in as well 
slightly different. But I'm going to go act very active with the uh, home cinema side of things. I've got some you know, very interesting and really good ideas planned. So some great content coming. If you like this video, don't forget to like it down below. That really helps. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. That's really helping me grow this channel faster and bring you better content quicker. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.